In this video, I'm going to show you how we can take a photo shot in studio background and transform it into a really good looking photo manipulation. So let's get started. Hey what's up guys, Dhruval here back with another video and as you can see this is the final output and this is the original photograph so as you can see. Uh, we're also gonna add this change so for this tutorial I'm gonna use this photo uh, as a model uh, this photo for the background and we will use this PNG file of the chain so you don't have to cut it out that's a big relief and for the model photo now this is the original photo and as you can see there is a lot of details in there uh, little little details so there is only one option pen tool now it took me around like half hour or maybe 45 50 minute, hour i don't know man but it took a lot of time to cut out this photo and it's really complex uh, so if you don't know how to use pen tool uh, i would just simply say use different image because this quick selection tool just doesn't work at all on this photo uh, so now let's focus on the background so here is the background and now I'm gonna press Ctrl A to select, Ctrl C to copy. I will come back here and then Ctrl V, paste it here. Now I will put this under model so it's behind her and then press Ctrl T. Uh, and then I will hold my shift key to make it bigger uh, like that. Let's look at the final output. So the pipe is somewhere around here as you can see. So I'm gonna put this thing around here uh, like that. And now let's make this bigger. Uh, hold my shift key, make it bigger and put the pipe. Make it a little bit more bigger uh, like that. Yeah, that looks awesome. Uh, and then go and confirm it. Now, as you can see, there is this little annoying pipe uh, that I want to get rid of so what i will simply do is go and select my clone tool from here you can also press s key for shortcut and make sure that you have selected current layer uh, then uh, i will just go and zoom in here uh, as you can see and let's go and i'm gonna hold my alter key and i will click here and then i'll start painting now my brush is really small so i will use my bracket key to make it bigger then i will again alter click here and let's go and paint it uh, take your time and make sure that it doesn't look repetitive or something like that uh, then let's go and select a sample from here and remove that then again i will click from here and remove it uh, just like that uh, and remove it from here now the background looks much better now it's time to add in some depth and to do that i will right click and convert it to a smart object then i will go to my filter blur gaussian blur and i will apply six pixels now it's not a fixed number if your image is different try a different number and six is because i don't want it to look fake because this much of depth of field this screams that i'm fake so try to keep it realistic and 6 looks good and now it's time to match some colors so it's a little trick that i use a lot of time so to do that uh, you have a layer mask right because you cut out the image uh, then you hold down your control key and you click on your layer mask like that so it will make a selection of the model now you select your background layer meanwhile selection is on then you press ctrl j so now if I turn both of these things off, as you can see, it made a cutout from the background with shape of model. So now let's turn both of this on. And now I will put this cutout on top. And then you go to filter, blur, and then you select average. So it will make a median color of entire cutout. Then you will go and change the blending mode to soft light. So now it will match the color of the background and environment much, much better. And since the lighting is here, uh, she will be slightly darker. I'm preparing the image because I'm gonna apply HDR. So light is brighter here, so she will be darker. So to make her look slightly darker, I will again hold my control key and click on this layer mask. So we have uh, selection already ready. Then I will go to my adjustment layers and there I will go and select hue saturation. So as you can see, it already has the layer mask. We don't have to do any hard work. And then I will go and decrease my lightness a little bit. 
somewhere around 23 22 and i will also kill in the saturation because it's way too saturated so yeah i think 19 20 looks good 22 22 works great so the basic color matching and lighting is ready now let's add in the chain so let's go and we don't need this one so let's go and close it so here are the chains uh, that i found on deviantart.com so again i'm gonna press ctrl a ctrl c to copy it go back here and paste it and as you can see select your move tool and move it around now you gotta press ctrl t hold your shift key and if it's really big just scroll out and make it smaller so you can see and let's make it smaller a little bit uh, a touch more yeah somewhere around here it looks really nice and let's go and confirm it i might adjust it a little bit here so yeah that looks great uh, and we don't need this one so i'm just gonna simply get my eraser tool uh, make it bigger using my bracket keys uh, and simply go and just erase it out so yeah that's gone and also i will zoom in and as you can see there's this cutout due to it being a png file uh, so what i will do is make my eraser really really small and then i will go and erase it in the shape uh, of this chain now i will recommend using layer mask if you know how to use it because that would be much more reliable uh, so also go and remove it from this inner portion uh, like that take your time and be accurate okay don't rush things because that's the real secret of good manipulation so as you can see now that looks nice and it will work out because now we are going to apply Gaussian blur we will apply the blur because they are in foreground so when we make them blurry there will be depth so let me show you right click and select convert to smart object then i will go to filter blur and then gaussian blur my number is 16 uh, so as you can see now that looks nice and that gap that is completely invisible so that's a big relief and then go and confirm it so now as you can see she is behind the chains and it creates this really cool depth now it's time to make the surroundings a little bit darker so to do that i will go and create a new adjustment layer uh, and select levels i will increase my mid tones sorry make them slightly darker and also my increase my highlights a little bit so we have nice balance in contrast nothing else uh, so that looks nice and that's good now i'm gonna remove it from the rest of the image so select your brush tool because whenever you paint on layer mask you have to use brush tool not eraser uh, so I'm gonna paint with black color to remove it where I don't need it uh, something like that so now if you turn it on and off as you can see it is only in the surrounding and now you can make it intense so that it looks much much more uh, visible so now you can play around as much as you want uh, yeah that's nice and now I'm again going to right click and make sure my hardness is 0% so that was the mistake we made hardness has to be 0% otherwise transition won't be smoother so select your mask again and now let's go and fade it out really nicely uh, as you can see good and if you want to bring it back in some area just paint with white color as you can see here uh, switch between using X key uh, so I'm going to paint with white color where I want to bring it back a little bit and then I will remove it from the glow a little bit so that is perfect now I'm gonna create another adjustment layer and then I will select curves and in the curves first of all I will make the overall image slightly brighter because it went way too on the darker side uh, so that looks nice uh, and good then I will go to my blues and there I will add a touch of yellow don't overdo it okay it's very tempting to do it but control yourself and yeah that looks uh, really really nice so if I turn it on and off now we have this really good yellowish tint all over uh, let's close it so the basic layout is complete uh, with lighting and chains and everything now it's time to apply the HDR for that really rough look we want so I will create a new blank layer then I will press ctrl alter shift and E so there will be a jpg of entire image inside the document then you right click 
and select it convert to smart object once it's convert to smart object as you can see like every time there's this little icon that shows it's a smart object so you double click on this thumbnail so it will say do you want to edit it so go and simply hit ok so it will open it in its own separate document uh, it is really important step okay don't skip it so now it's in a completely different uh, setup in a document then you go to image adjustment and then go to HDR toning now HDR toning will ask you that do you want to flatten this document eventually yeah now <laughs> so do you want to flat it say yes because we don't have anything to lose and hit yes so as you can see at the current moment it looks really horrible <laughs> so first thing we have problem saturation is way too much so I'm gonna go and make it zero then also I'm gonna go and control its radius a little bit and turn it down but also make sure that if you don't overdo it because if you kill the radius way too much it will start making the image blur and we actually need the details so be careful with that and then go and play around with the strength a little bit uh, strength is even more important step because if you overdo it it looks just awful and really really bad so this thing is really powerful it gives you good output but only if you use it carefully uh, so radius uh, i think yeah that's enough contrast uh, and in the strength uh, let's go and try uh, smooth edges try for your image if it works out good this time here it's working so i'm gonna use it uh, but if it doesn't don't force yourself to use it uh, so i think uh, yeah that that looks really good and in the details first of all increase and see how it looks and now it's yuck god that's awful so then you turn it down uh, to your taste uh, so maybe 14 percent that looks good uh, and then you can do everything separately the shadows and highlights and things but i didn't screw around because the natural was looking way 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 good and in the saturation now i'm gonna go and start decreasing it a little uh, not too much though okay uh, so I think minus 8% is good and I think I didn't change anything else too much maybe cut down the vibrance attach uh, and then increase the radius a bit so that looks really nice and I'm just gonna go and simply hit ok so as you can see now it has adapted the HDR toning now you might thinking uh, this is in different document and this image is this clear is in different document so all you have to do is just go to file and select save that's it now you can close this document you don't need it and now as you can see that layer has been updated without flattening the document and this is the best way to use your HDR toning now one important note is that in the beginning I forgot to tell you that I'm also going to use this park image uh, and it is also from DeviantArt and the download link is in the description so use it. So let's go and select this image Control A, Control C, copy it, come back here and then I will go and simply paste it Control V and change its blending mode to where is it screen. Uh, so as you can see we have this spark here now I don't want it on entire image so I'm gonna press ctrl T hold my shift key and make it smaller and put it somewhere here uh, yeah where it's not very distracting uh, and looks also really good so that looks uh, really nice and go and confirm it so the spark there looks good and you can erase some of it so it doesn't come out as a square so let's go and simply take your eraser tool and erase some of it let's make it bigger uh, and from here and there let's erase it a touch uh, maybe like that and then you can put it here like that and that just looks good and to make it more impactful all you have to do is just make a duplicate of it and now you can see it really nice uh, so that's really cool and then just hold your control key and select both of the copies and then press control E so as you can see now they have merged that layer and then again change the blending mode to screen it is like double brightness but in single layer 
so that's one important trick you can use now comes one of the most important step of this tutorial that will like change the entire look of the image so we have prepared the image for this step specially so i'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and then i will go and select channel mixer now in the channel mixer first of all you have to go to your red channel because uh, skin and the background and every there's there's a lot of red things here so first thing i will do is increase my red uh, to up to 150 percent looks horrible but wait for it okay then i will go and start to kill off my greens uh, to somewhere around 70 percent so as you can see now it is balancing out the things the red increased that looked good on skin and other portion but where it was unnecessary the green will remove it like taking the slider this way it's a little complicated uh, like uh, thing to use but if you practice you will get better and now for the split tone i'm also gonna need to use a bit of a blues uh, so don't overkill it uh, somewhere around 15 16 uh, let's say 15 uh, should be good so as you can see it has started taking shape but it will take time and here is one important step this is called constant and it will allow you how much do you want blue and if you take it this way how much do you want red so i want to be on a bluer side a little bit uh, so this looks fine to me and now we will go and move on to second channel that is our green channel so here i'm gonna add a little bit of a red uh, and then I will also add a little bit of a yellowish, yellowish tone like I will kill off the my blues and in the constant I will go and put it minus 2 so a little bit on the red side because the blue is getting really stronger then let's go to the blue channel now in the blue channel we don't need a lot of reds so I'm gonna go and make it minus 65 so wait for it wait for it wait for it okay <laughs> Then in the blue channel, I'm going to make my blues all the way to 200%. So as you can see, we increase the blue, we decrease the red and it, it is balancing out things and it is punching the tone. As you can see, the reds are getting better and better and blues are getting better and better. Now we can balance out things using green. So to do that, I'm going to put minus 14 on the green. So in the constant, I'm gonna put it on the blue side because the red and yellow are getting a bit stronger. So I'm gonna add in plus 12 and there it is. Uh, now let's look at the difference. This is your regular output and this is with the channel mixer. So because we went into every channel and we created the distance between red and blue, uh, the skin tones became really nice oranges and the background became really nice and blue and thus we created a really good separation with model and the background so this is one really important thing i always wanted to cover about channel mixer it's amazing to use it now it's time to create some of the vignetting so create a new adjustment layer and before creating the vignette always make sure that you have your default colors black and white so create a new adjustment layer the gradient in the gradient uh, radial uh, and I will make it reverse uh, increase my scaling for really soft output uh, somewhere around that uh, yeah that looks really really nice and the gradient is always foreground to transparent for smoother transparency and go and hit ok and again I'm gonna go and hit ok then I will change its blending mode to where is it soft light uh, as you can see and then I will decrease the opacity here to somewhere around 70% uh, so let's turn it on and off yeah the sides are really getting darker and looking really good and due to channel mixer and hdr and everything the color became way too saturated so i'm gonna go and create a new adjustment layer uh, select my hue saturation and decrease the saturation a little bit uh, don't make it something like this black and white or something like that just keep in control okay uh, make it look as natural as possible so somewhere around minus 22 yeah that looks good and now also because of too much processing we lost a bit of a mid-tone contrast so create a new adjustment layer and select levels and i will add a touch mid-tone contrast and increase the highlights uh, because uh, this portion here the light uh, it will get really good benefit from using this step uh, and i will also decrease my mid-tones a little bit 
So it just creates a really good contrast uh, that uh, will work really nice with heavy details. Uh, so take your time and adjust it. Uh, so let's turn it on and off. And as you can see now it suddenly looks much much better. Maybe too strong on highlights. So let's control it a little bit here. Now it looks great as you can see. And now comes the part that you will have to go through in every photo manipulation you do. And that is adjusting things. So for this one, I would like to go to channel mixer and in the green tones, I think we went a little too far. So I would try to go for 90. Uh, yeah, that's that's looking really nice. So now let's look at the difference uh, for 90 and 100. So 100 is way too strong and 84 is way too less. So 90 worked out really good. Uh, so that is good. Uh, so now look at the difference. It's absolutely amazing so also uh, this is the final output <laughs> we are actually done with the video and let's look at the after before so i'm just gonna go and make a copy put it here so this is the original image that we started to work with and this is the final output that we created and everything every single freaking thing is in different layer so now you can go and change it and give it your special touch and if you create any output feel free to share on my facebook page i would happily look at it so i really hope that you guys learned something from this video and if you did hit that like button so i can know and if you have any kind of questions or suggestions feel free to drop them in the comment section below also if you want to check out more photo manipulation tutorials you can click on any of these boxes and you can also subscribe to my channel so every time i upload a new video you will get the update plus clicking on that subscribe button will take you to my youtube channel where i have more than 85 free photoshop tutorials just waiting for you so till then goodbye take care and have some fun with photoshop